So we're going to be talking about uh, Wi-Fi rules. And when we talk about rules, I'm talking about guidelines, um, best practices, the stuff that makes the CWNA book about this thick, right? There's lots and lots of them. Um, we don't have time to cover them all, but I am going to call out some of the easier ones to discuss. I am a geezer. I've been doing Wi-Fi for 20 plus years, big and small networks, um, design, implementation, support. I mention it because that's where my frame of reference comes from and what we're about to talk about. <clears throat> and I will say, please accommodate me. You all have a part in this presentation. When you see the words, unless you can't, say it with me. Quick practice, unless you can't. Wake up, come on. <laughs> so again, we're gonna talk about some of the easier ones that are uh, worth pulling out into the light of day to make the point. <laughs> Always stay out of the hallways. Thank you. And when we talk about hallways, in the, the context is down the hallway designs, right? Uh, the dreaded, you know, it can't work. I've actually heard people say, it can't work on the table. Uh, there's no way it can work. Well, actually it can. Um, you might probably not want to set out to do that, but sometimes you have no choice. Sometimes you inherit it and you're stuck with it. Yes, it can work. The keys to making it work are you taking over the radios. You don't rely on RRM. You understand what happens when the... APs are very close to each other, and you override that. And then you test, and you monitor over time as clients change, but absolutely it can work. I have thousands of people, more than I wish I had, running on hallway designs right now for a number of reasons, but absolutely you can break that rule and it will work. Understand your client devices. Unless you can't. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to have ultimate control over what comes on the wire, or what comes on the wireless? What hits your network? What clients are accessing the network? <clears throat> I don't have that luxury. I will deploy APs, and in the life cycle of you know, that AP or that model AP, whatever, that deployment, um, we'll get two or three life cycles of clients that come in. You just can't tell what's coming all the time and you can't tell how the vendors are going to evolve it. So it sounds really good. Know your devices, know what's gonna be on the wire. Maybe in ports, maybe in retail, maybe in inventory control, but in my world, you just can't. Now what I can do is understand what I want out of my wireless network, what the most important things for my users are out of the wireless network. Generally, it can be summarized as good performance, stability, right? So as new devices come along and somebody says, hey, can I put this on the network? Well, let me see what we can do. Yes, that'll work, and here's why. That's not a great fit, and, and here's why. And maybe things like MDNS or whatever, it's like, no, 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 no. Um, so knowing what the network is set up to do, knowing how you're willing to flex the network, that will help you to put the client devices into perspective because I'm saying that's a rule that, at least for me, the know your devices, it just really uh, can't be done. At least generally. <coughs> Install antennas in the best location for coverage. <laughs> Yay. Let's do another. Use the best antenna for the scenario. Unless you can, you guys are lame. <laughs> but thank you for your lameness, it's better than nothing. Uh, un unless, unless you can't. Um, whether we're talking about the type of antenna or where to put the antenna, you know, maybe it would be perfect right there, but to get it right there, it's $2,000 worth of permitting, it's $15,000 worth of pathway, and the architect has a real problem with the way it's gonna look. It's like all the common sense 
factors that apply to the scenario say, boy, you know, I, I would love to put it there, but I'm going to have to do something different. Whether it be a different model AP, you know, maybe I'll put a wall plate AP and a wall plate AP here to achieve the same thing that that would have given me or close enough to it to fulfill whatever the requirement is. You know, alternatives, different model APs, different model antennas, different location. But these are things that require skills, right? You absolutely can get away with not doing what's perfect when it comes to device placement and the antennas you use on those devices, <clears throat> but you have to be able to still fulfill the, the needs of this, this situation. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my, or losing my voice. Always do a post-install survey. <laughs> Am I the only one who can't do this on occasion? I will have spaces that the installers can't get into the last minute. Those installers get in, they do their thing, and literally hours later, people are moving in, and we have to be out of there, right? So common sense says, oh, geez, you're, you're filling a new space with wireless. You better get in there and see how you did. Okay, after 20 years of doing this, I'm saying, controversial statement coming up, I'm saying good design and a history of good design and knowing what you're doing. I don't want to say it negates the need for a post-install survey, but it goes a long way to helping. You don't need to get in there and walk every square inch. I'll also say that the systems that we spend a lot of money on, the uh, network management systems, they give you a lot of data. I love data, I love statistics. You should be able to get into that dashboard, see all kinds of data that also validates without you walking around. It's looking at things differently. It's a different perspective on whether that design is working or not. And you might have to augment it with spot checks, and I recommend augmenting it with spot checks. <coughs> but you can actually put out wireless and not do a post-install survey if the situation doesn't let you get back in and it's not the end of the world, if you did good design. Never reuse a previous design. Again, controversial to say horse pucky, right? And some of this comes down to what do you do for a living? If I sell wireless designs, I have a different outlook on this than if I am in my position where I have to look at the previous one. How good is it serving? Was it done well to begin with? I can run a bunch of reports and see, am I, do I have APs that are just getting hundreds of clients? Well, if so, I probably have to at least do ads. Now, I'm not saying don't change the design, don't augment the design, but what I am saying is you don't have to scrap the previous design in all cases. I'm going through a cycle right now where you know, if we had a last building, or the last design in a building had, I don't know, 50 APs, it's just, just all conversational numbers, and I run reports on it as we look to do the next round, the, the life cycle refresh, I might have to add none, I might have to add two, I might have to add 15, depending on the building, but there's data that helps tell you that, right? And I'm keeping most of the last design because to replace it would be cost prohibitive. I just can't, especially where we have pathway, or pathway needs and pathway costs. So some historic buildings, it's almost impossible. This has come up in you know, past uh, WLPC sessions. Um, it's just every situation is a little bit different and you can actually take an analytical look at a previous design and at least salvage some of it. You can break that rule that you can never use a previous design. And again, oh, I, I ripped you off. Do it. Thank you. Or if it was a great design. And again, some designs are perfectly reusable, believe it or not, and it's gonna be in the more dense situations. Boy, I hosed you. The truth of the matter is sometimes real world uh, Wi-Fi sucks. Wi-Fi in the real world sucks. It's not 
you know, you've got the CWNA book and you've got all the things you've studied and all the vendor white papers. Well, wouldn't it be nice if it was all just that cut and dry and that easy to implement? A lot of times it's just messy. You get a lot of voices telling you what you can do and what you can't do. You have to wade through all of it. You have to find a happy medium. <coughs> you know, it just kind of is what it is. We, as the wireless professionals, need to roll with all of that. We need to take all of those inputs and our experience that if you don't have yet, hopefully you will develop to the point where you can take on these rules and look at them with confidence and say, yeah, well, this time I have to deviate a little bit and, and this time you know, I, I can do it and I should do it and I know why I should and I know when to deviate. But it's our job as the wireless professional to make those decisions and make them defensible and make them stand. <clears throat> so the question is, you know, how? How do we make those decisions? Well, my challenge to you is, you're the expert. I'm the expert. Figure it out. This is where the textbook ends. The textbooks will tell you all the things that should do. The design guides, the install guides, the survey tools, they all go to a point and then it's like, okay, this situation is new. It's different. It's not covered by any of this. Time to step back, not be a slave to the tool, not be a slave to the process, not be so focused on having that floor plan that I hand over to somebody be green and nothing but green. You got to decouple and actually figure out what it is that you're trying to do and how to get there. And again, the what is it that you're trying to do? Performance stability. And again, the books and the, the tech literature kind of go so far and then it's like, oh geez, I'm off the reservation. Now what do I do? You figure it out. You absolutely figure it out because that's your job. There is always another way. Hopefully it's a better way. Hopefully it's an alternative way. Hopefully it is a way that takes you to where you need to be, again, stability and performance. It may not be what you started off thinking you could do because you walk into a situation and things change, right? And we, the professional, have to, we, the professionals, have to be uh, sophisticated enough and critical enough in our thoughts to be able to recognize what needs to happen and how to veer off and, and do the, the other thing that we would rather uh, not do if things were perfect. But the bottom line in red there, the requirements. That's what we're aiming for, right? That's the prize, the eyes on the prize saying, that is the prize, what were the requirements? Yes, I didn't do it exactly the way I thought I was going to do it. Did I meet requirements? If I did, I guess the rules weren't all that important, right? That's all I got.